So we'll look at graphing quadratic functions. We'll do it for three different situations. We'll learn to graph from the general or standard form of a quadratic function. This function is an example of one in standard or general form, y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. We'll learn how to graph quadratic functions written like this in vertex form. We'll graph this function, f of x equals quantity x plus 3 squared minus 4. And finally, we'll graph equations in factor form. We'll graph this function, y equals quantity x minus 5 times quantity x plus 1. Before going further, let me encourage you, if at all possible, to get out some graph paper and follow along by doing this with me, stopping and trying to work ahead before rolling the video to learn this a whole lot better today. And in graphing with all of these methods, we will use our knowledge of the simplest or parent quadratic function y equals x squared to make them a whole lot easier to graph. Here's a graph of the quadratic parent function y or f of x equals x squared. Here are the coordinates next to the points. The parent quadratic function has distinctive spacing and symmetry that we can use to graph other quadratic functions. Here the points are assembled in a table. Starting from the origin and the vertex of the parabola at 0, 0, these two points immediately to the left and right are one unit above on the plotted graph. The next two points that are two units to the left or right are four units above the origin. And the points three to the left and three to the right of the origin are nine units higher. And we can continue the pattern. Four units away from the origin would be 16 units higher, five units would be 25 units higher and so on. By remembering and following this pattern, this squared pattern, we will be better able to sketch graphs of quadratic functions. Now we'll graph this first quadratic function in standard or general form, y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. The standard form of a quadratic function is 1, where the function is written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c where a is the leading coefficient of the quadratic term, b is the coefficient of the linear term, and c is the constant term, or the number all by itself. Next, we label the a, b, and c in the quadratic function. Since it's just x squared, a equals 1, b equals negative 2, since it's negative 2x, and the constant c, or y-intercept, is negative 15. And now we'll take a look at the quadratic formula, and that's x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. To start graphing, we need just the first part of the quadratic formula, negative b over 2a. So this is the equation of the line of the axis of symmetry, x equals negative b over 2a. I have a little song I use to help me remember this formula. Negative b over 2a, x is negative b over 2a. Graphing parabola is the easy way. Start with negative b over 2a. Now we're ready to use the axis of symmetry formula. Negative 2 goes in for b, and 1 goes in for a. So that's going to be negative negative 2 over 2 times 1, which equals 1. So on a coordinate plane, we draw our axis of symmetry as the vertical line, x equals 1. We take the axis of symmetry as an input value to the function y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15, and that gives us f of 1 equals 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 15. And that is f of 1 equals 1 minus 2 minus 15, which equals negative 16. So we start our table with 1 as our initial input value. And we can plot that first point at 1 comma negative 16, which is a vertex or minimum of this function. And we place numbers, one above and one below, the one of the axis of symmetry. And those numbers would be 0 and 2. And just one unit away, we are at plus 1 from the original parent function pattern. So at plus 1 from the vertex, that would be negative 16 plus 1. On either side of negative 16, that would be negative 15. And we can plot these two additional points on the coordinate plane. Next, we go two units away from 1, so we have negative 1 and 3. And these outputs would be 4 from the vertex, or 4 higher at, from uh, negative 16. That would make these outputs negative 12. And here the points are plotted on the coordinate plane. Next, we look at the input values 3 away from the origin, so they would be negative 
2 and 4 and these would be plus 9 so they would be negative 16 plus 9 which equals negative 7 and here the points are plotted on the coordinate plane and to get up the x-axis we're going to move up yet another point to 4 away we have negative 3 at the top and 5 at the bottom both 4 units away from the origin and both these outputs are 4 squared or 16 units up from the vertex that would make the output value negative 16 plus 16 which equals 0 and here are those points plotted right on the x-axis which makes them the x-intercepts of the function and here's the curve sketched in and that's y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15 let's graph this function another one in standard form f of x equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 5 this gives us an a of negative 1, a b of 4, and a c of negative 5 to find the axis of symmetry, we use the x equals negative b over 2a formula as we did in our previous example. I like using a form of the axis of symmetry formula with open parentheses left in place for the a and the b. I find that it helps to avoid sign errors. I especially recommend doing this when using the quadratic formula. Here it is with the a of negative 1 and the b of 4 filled inside the provided parentheses. And that simplifies to x equals 2. So the equation x equals 2 is our uh, equation for the axis of symmetry. So this input value 2 becomes the centerpiece in our table we will use to provide the points to plot. And we can fill out the other input values by placing three x coordinates both above and below the 2. We place the 2 in place of the x to find the vertex of the quadratic function. And that becomes f of 2 equals negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 5. That simplifies to negative 4 plus 8 plus 5 which equals 9. So the 9 becomes the y coordinate that goes along with the x coordinate 2. Now we'll try 1 as an input value and that becomes f of 1 equals negative 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 5. And that simplifies to negative 1 plus 4 plus 5 which equals 8 and 8 goes opposite the input value of 1 in the table and the other output on the other side of the 2 will be the same number 8 because of the symmetry of a parabola or quadratic function do you remember at the beginning of the lesson the pattern for the parent quadratic function with the increases from the origin of 1, 4, 9, 16 and so on since the parabola is opening downward the next y value will be down 4 units from the maximum or nine and that will make the output five which is the same as the y-intercept of five in the function since that's what it is and because of symmetry that makes the other side at an input of four the output value of five as well and following the pattern the next output value will be down nine from the vertex and 9 minus 9 is 0 bringing us to the x-axis and because of symmetry the output for the input of 5 will also be 0 so we have found our x-intercepts now we'll get out the graph paper and here are all the points plotted from the table we constructed along with the axis of symmetry at x equals 2 and here's the curve of the parabola through the points what if we have something like this f of x equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 8 in the first problem we looked at we considered the pattern of progression of the output values and the table from this pattern development is shown at the right that we developed before working the problems but this leading coefficient of x squared is 2 and not 1 so that changes the pattern since it's 2 that doubles all these changes on the right side of the table so instead of increasing by 1, 4, and 9, 16 from the vertex they will increase by 2, 8, 18, 36 is now shown, 32 rather, as shown at the right. So 1 away from the origin is plus 2, 2 away would be plus 8, and 3 away would be plus 18, and 4 away if we had it would be plus 32. We're going to leave these changes on the right side while we look at the formula again for the axis of symmetry x equals negative b over 2a. But to do this, we need to identify a and b. a is 2, b is 12, and c is 8. Here's the formula with parentheses for the a and the b. 
The 12 goes in for the B and the 2 in for the A. So we have x equals negative 12 in the numerator and 2 times 2 in the denominator, which becomes x equals negative 3. So negative 3 is the axis symmetry where we start on our table. And we'll fill in three numbers to either side of the axis of symmetry. We'll now take that input value, negative 3, and use it to find the y coordinate of our vertex by plugging it into our function. We have f of negative 3 equals 2 times negative 3 squared plus, 9, plus 12 times negative 3 plus 8. That becomes f of negative 3 equals 18 minus 36 plus 8, which equals negative 10. And this negative 10 goes here to the right of the negative 3 in the table. And then on either side of the negative 10 will be negative 10 plus 2 or negative 8. And the next numbers on either side will be negative 10 plus 8, which equals negative 2. And finally, the next numbers will be negative 10 plus 18 or positive 8. Now we can plot the points. Here's the graph with the axis of symmetry of x equals negative 3 and the vertex which is at negative 3 comma negative 10. And here are the other six points plotted. And here's the parabolic curve drawn through the seven points. Now we'll move on to our second method in this lesson, graphing using the vertex form of a quadratic function. I saved this method after the first one because it is quite a bit easier to graph, especially when considering what we did graphing from standard form. For this method, we'll employ the same pattern of quadratic functions we used earlier. When starting from the vertex, we're able to go up a certain number of units based on a position from the vertex. In the vertex form, we have our starting point, our vertex, shown in the numbers in the function. Shown below our function is the vertex formula of a quadratic function. It's a times quantity x minus h plus k. Here's what we do. We rewrite the function we're graphing in the a times quantity x minus h squared plus k form, and here it is below. The trickiest part of this is remembering that the formula is x minus h, so in order for it to be x minus h, the h in the equation has to be negative 3 in order for this to work. So we use these numbers, representing h and k in the formula, to give us our vertex at x equals negative 3 and y equals negative 4. We place three input values on either side of the vertex, so we have negative 2, negative 1, and 0 below, and negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6 above that negative 3. Following our quadratic pattern, we add 1 to negative 4 above and below, so that would be negative 3. Then the next output is negative 4 plus 4, or 0. And then continuing to follow the pattern, we have negative 4 plus 9, which equals 5. We'll now graph the function. Here is our coordinate grid we'll be working with. We can draw in our axis of symmetry, x equals negative 3. Then we can place our vertex here at negative 3 comma negative 4. And here are all the other points drawn in. And here is the parabolic uh, parabola drawn through points. I hope you can see how easy it is to graph a parabola from the vertex form of a quadratic function. Let's look at this function in vertex form. We have y equals negative 1 fourth times quantity x minus 2 squared plus 3. The vertex form gives us a vertex at 2 comma 3. This gives us a starting point from which to work to find our other points in order to graph our function. We go back to the original pattern to see where we need to go next. This leading coefficient, negative 1 fourth, means we will need to do two things. The negative means that we will go down from the minimum va maximum value of 3. And the 1 fourth means that we will have to multiply by 1 fourth of all the changes as we go downward from the vertex or maximum. So the first value will go down, and at 1 fourth times 1, we have 3 minus 1 fourth, which is 2.75 as a y value on either side of the vertex. The next value is 3 minus 1 fourth of 4, which is 3 minus 1, which equals 2. The next number is 9 in the squared pattern, so that will be 3 minus 1 fourth of 9, or 3 minus 2.25, which is 0.75. The next number in the squared pattern is 16, so that will be 3 minus 1 fourth 
of 16, or that would be 3 minus 4, which equals negative 1. The next number in the squared pattern is 25, so that will be 3 minus 1 fourth of 25, or 3 minus 6.25, which equals negative 3.25. We'll do one more. 3 minus 1 fourth of 36 is 3 minus 9. So that would be 3 minus 9 equals negative 6. Now we'll get a coordinate grid on which to plot our points. Our axis of symmetry is at x equals 2. We plot our vertex, which is a maximum at 2 comma 3. We draw in the remainder of the points of the function. And here's the curve drawn through the points. We see a wider parabola than the standard one. And the last one, which we use 1, is the leading coefficient. And as promised, we will graph the factored form of a quadratic function. It looks like this. We have the factored form of y equals quantity x minus 5 times quantity x plus 1. We can use each factor of this function to locate zeros of the function. We find the zeros by breaking down the equations x minus 5 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0. And solving for x, we have the zeros at x equals 5 and at x equals negative 1. We can mark these zeros as points in our grid as shown. And we know the axis of symmetry has to split the two points, the two x-intercepts, since quadratic functions are symmetrical. So it will be the line x equals 2. And we can find our vertex or minimum by finding f of 2, and that will be quantity 2 minus 5 times quantity x 2 plus 1, and that's negative 3 times negative 3, which would equal negative 9. So we can plot our vertex at 2 comma negative 9 and start our table if we wanted to do that, but we can plot our next points by following the quadratic pattern and by going up one unit for the input values to the left and to the right of the vertex. The next set will be 4 units up from the vertex. The next set is 9 units up from the vertex, and these are the zeros already plotted. And the next set up from that is 4 squared, or 16 units higher than the vertex. And here's the curve drawn through the points of the function. So we've essentially translated this parent quadratic function of y equals x squared down and to the right. In this lesson, we've gone over examples of graphing quadratic functions in three different forms, the standard or general form, the vertex form, and the factored form. Depending on how well you follow along, it might be a good idea to get additional practice in graphing using these methods. This has been Graphing Quadratic Functions. Thanks for viewing.